<laughs> there's a not a great idea. <clears throat> Keeps you awake. Does everybody here have something in their mind or even in their heart that is dear to them and really makes them just kind of get juiced up when they think about, I could do that? Toastmaster, Toastmasters, guests. I believe everybody on the planet has something like that that they think about. It could be something that just comes to you when you sit down or when somebody mentions that. You're the great example because you spent 20 years in a business and finally said, I'm going to be a pilot, and you did it. My point is we all need to do something to do it. And any time we take a little step into what the direction of whatever that item is, it's going to get us going. It's going to get us inspired. It's going to get us motivated. Take one of these and just pass it around. And I'd like everybody to take that part that's in your, idea, in your head, or just that, it could be a one-liner, bungee jump, just anything it happens to be, feeding the world, whatever one thing might be that you just aspire to do, and maybe you never even share it with anybody. Don't put your name on it or anything. This is just going to be off the wall, just, just kind of a thing we'll, we'll share in a minute. <clears throat> because I believe this is so real that personally, I've got 53 years under my belt, and a lot of things in my life I have in my head, but I've never really talked about it. And the main reason is, if you go through life enough, the battle knocks you down. People tell you, you can't do that. Circumstances say it'll never work. So what I'm thinking is, if we can be around people like I'm here, this is why I'm here. I don't know about you guys, but we're around people that believe in us. People that say, you can do this. Somebody in this group might even put your arm around and say, I believe you can do that. And man, you just kind of you stand up taller. You know, when we have people that are always saying, and it's usually somebody close to us, different when you're a parent, but <laughs> they will tell you, you? I know you. You can't do that. Or, oh, come on. You? And, you know, you, how do you feel when that happens? You're so deflated. So my point in that, in this, this, this point in putting that on paper, it's a step forward. If you have that thing in your head and you've never even shared it, and you put it on paper, that's something real. It's tangible. Your hand actually says, undo jump it. It's in my hand. You see it. That's a step closer to doing it. A few stories, a few people. I was fortunate enough to know a man who was an Olympian, three-time Olympian, Henry Marsh. He started out when he was just a young guy. He's trained for probably 20 years because each Olympics is four years apart. So if you figure he went through one, he didn't win, but he made it. He went through another one, he didn't win, but he competed. He went through the third time, as in his mid to late 20s, in the steeplechase. I don't know if you know about that. There's all kinds of craziness running the track. He still didn't win the gold, but he went through all the difficulty. His friends saying, let's go do this. He said, no, i got to train. All these years when he overcame those obstacles and was successful because he made it to the Olympics three times. Another guy, some of you may have heard of, his name's Eric. I think it's Waymeyer. <clears throat> this guy baffles the mind, but as a young child, he was perfectly normal. And he could look into his mom's eyes and see the love that we all remember. He remembers playing with his dog and chasing him. Seeing the snow or watching sunsets. <clears throat> but you know, he got sick when he was about 12 years old and he lost his vision. At that moment, because he was such a stubborn kid, he says, I don't even want to learn Braille. I'm just going to be fine. I don't need to see. I'm going to be okay. But that drive helped him overcome some of the negativity. So he could embrace the struggle of being sightless because now he has so much vision. He's a great motivational speaker. This blind guy has climbed Mount Everest. Think about that. I think it's the second highest peak in the world. And this person that cannot see has made it to the top. <clears throat> Short story. There's a young fellow, his name, it, it, he actually went by, um, what did his father call him? Tuck. Tuck in a different language is actually, it means something about the head. His dad called him that as a pet name because he thought he was really smart. 3 o'clock in the morning, pounding on the door, says, Tuck, let's get to the barn. We got a horse down. So he says, okay, he gets dressed to go out to the barn. <clears throat> Tuck goes over, and they first walk into the barn, and he says, Papa, what's wrong? There's a horse down. And Dad says, uh, well, we have a problem. He says, what do you see, Tuck? Dad's always asking him the same question because he wants him to evaluate what he sees. <clears throat> he says, well, I see the horse down, Dad. Uh, Papa, and he's struggling. Well, what else do you see? Why well, see a foot? She's going to have the baby. It's a back foot tuck. That's bad. We could lose them both. What are you going to do, Papa? Well, I have to try and help her. How are you going to do that? 
Well, while I'm doing that, I just want you to watch, because there's a lot you can learn here. So as Papa works on the, on the horse, he does what's necessary as a big man, and he can manipulate the baby before he comes out. So he steps back, he's cleaning himself up, and <laughs> he says, Tuck, what do you see? He says, oh, I see a mama, she's worn out. I don't know if she's going to make it. He says, don't worry about the mama, she's been here before, she'll be okay. What do you see? Well, I see the, the, just, I just see the little nose that's about to come out. Looks like you're about to have a baby. Keep watching, Tuck, what do you see? So he kind of squats down and he's watching. He's about to come out, Papa, looks like his head's about to come out. Oh my gosh, he's all, he popped, wow, he just popped right out. He says, that's right, what else do you see, Todd? He says, well, where's she going? Well, what do you mean? She, well, the mom, she just walked away. Well, she has to get up and get things moving around again, so she'll come back, don't worry. What about the baby, what do you see? Well, oh, he's just shivering, Papa. I don't know, is he okay? Is he going to make it? Well, just watch, Todd, tell me, what do you see? Well, he's, he's just, oh, looks, oh, he rolled up onto his butt, Papa. It looks like he's kind of sitting up. Oh, he's going to try his, oh, Papa, he fell over. Is he going to be all right? He says, well, yeah, just keep watching and tell me what you see. Poppy is laid down again. I don't know. He's just laying there. Keep watching. He can't lay there, Tuck, because he'll die. He has to get up. He's got to go through that struggle. He has to get up or he's going to die. The fluids will settle in his lungs. He won't be able to breathe. He'll die. So, but you can't touch him. He has to do it on his own. That's why the monk left. Okay, Papa, let's watch him. Okay, Papa, he's back up on his butt again. Who is he? I'll stick you with him. He's getting up again, Papa. Okay, he's up. He's on all four legs, Papa. He's always all just rattling around. He's going to follow it. Papa, what's she doing? She's going to come over and knock over her own baby. Oh, she's cleaning him up. They're going to be okay. Now, that's the struggle. They have to embrace that struggle to survive. They got through the pain. The athlete goes through denying himself. The blind person, who knows what he had to go through to overcome all these obstacles in life, to climb a mountain, and now he's a great speaker up here in front of people he can't even see. And then the baby overcomes, I mean, really liquid in his lungs, he'll, he'll die. <clears throat> so Tuck witnesses all this. He realizes we have to embrace the struggles in our life. Or we're not going to be able to overcome. We're not going to take that step. Would you pass those all the way back that you wrote on? Or here, I'll just pull up. The ones that you, did you write anything? Oh, <laughs> Those that did. Yeah. Thank you. I won't have any names or anything. If you put anything on it, that's okay. Really. My point in this is it's very simple. Thank you. We go through lots of struggles. We have people that will discourage us. We have circumstances that will stop us, but we have to take steps to overcome the struggles in life. And I just want to read these. It doesn't matter who they're from, but this is another step. Because you wrote it down, you thought about it, it's in your hand, and now I'm going to read it. It doesn't matter who they're from, but when you hear it, you now have gone another step to get closer to what you want to do. So, somebody wants to be a speaker for TED Talks. Me too. <clears throat> Helping children. That could be anything. That could be in your own home. That could be in a school. And that, because you're touching another life, is huge. I mean, none of these are bigger or less than another because it's in your heart. And that's what we have to overcome. How do I get there? Uh, speaking to huge crowds. <laughs> that's a big aspiration. <clears throat> Finding all children loving, uh, loving homes. Start my business and be an entrepreneur, which allows you to do a lot of other things. Drawing. Pick up a pen. Uh, I'm really just do it, but that's doing it. You hear me say it, now you want, to do, you want to do more drawing, you're a step closer to doing it. And flying as a commercial pilot. I wonder who said that. <laughs> <laughs> now, I want you guys to just humor me for, some, for a second. This little statement that I've heard recently, and it really, it, it just kind of gets my juices going when I think about it. And say these things with me, okay? So, you're all thinking of your own item. The thing that you put down, something that just gets you fired up. Now say, why not this? Say it with me. Why, why not, not this? this? Why not now? Why not now? And why not me? Why, why not, not me? me? 